If you're new to the channel, welcome. If you're not new, welcome back. So a few days ago, I went to whip up a new Laravel app and I realized that something was very, very different. And what I ended up finding out was that the new installations of Laravel, the default installations no longer are using Mix with their default installation, which is perfectly fine. I just had no idea what Vite was. <laughs> so I kind of went through it and I don't really mind it. It actually reminds me of Nux.js and I really, really like Nux.js where it's sort of a layer that is built on top of Vue. It just sort of makes things a little bit better and more efficient with Vue. I decided to give it a try. I took an old project and I was able to upgrade it with some bumps and bruises, but I was able to upgrade it and everything works perfectly fine now. So I figured that this would be a good resource to kind of go through the steps that I took to show you how I did it. If you head down to the documentation and go over to bundling assets, which will be under the basics, go down to introduction. And there also is a migration guide, which we will be following. So if you click that, it'll take you to this page right here. Before you do anything, you want to make sure that your Laravel is at version 9.19 or higher. I have a video from the most recent project that we did, which was the Laravel e-commerce series. And we upgraded our project from 8 to 0.9. So if you need some sort of a reference or a guide on how to do that, then I would definitely go ahead and take a look at that video. Basically, what you want to do is once you get everything up to the current version of Laravel, you want to make sure that all of your dependencies, whether they're for the Laravel side of things or the view side of things, so your NPM or your PHP stuff, you want to make sure that everything is upgraded and working before you continue on. Now, I already have a project that I just did a little dummy project. And if we go ahead and go over to the composer.json, you see that I have Laravel 9.19 and everything is up to date so that we have a working project. If we go to our browser, you see that we have a working project. We can go to register. We can do whatever we want to do. Everything is working up until this point perfectly. Also, if we go to the package.json, you see that we have inertia, inertia v3, and then we have Laravel mix and the post CSS import, all that good stuff. So let's go ahead and get back to the documentation and figure out what we need to do first. First, you will need to install Vite and the plugin and use the package manager of choice. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. Then I'm going to open up a terminal and I have it running here. So I'm going to go ahead and just stop NPM for now. And I'm going to open up a fresh terminal for us, paste that in, let that run. Great. So it has installed those packages for us. So the next thing that we'll need to do is to install additional Vite plugins. So this is the Vite.js plugin dash view that we'll need. We'll go ahead and copy that since that's where we're using. If you were doing this with React, you would go ahead and use React. Great. That's installed those plugins. And now we need to configure Vite. So this would be vite.config.js. We'll need to go ahead and create that. And I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And we'll take a look at it in a bit. So what we'll need to do is we can do touch vite config JS, and that'll create a new file for us, which is this vite config JS. Okay, we'll go ahead and paste that in. Okay, so now we have an import defined config from V, Laravel from Laravel V plugin. We are not going to be needing this React one unless you are using React, then you could go ahead and do that. And then we're going to import V from the new plugin that we just installed. So we can leave this here and we can get rid of this React. And then we're going to go ahead and uncomment this because we do need that. For now, that's good. Okay, and it says if you're building a spy, you'll get a better development experience. So we're not doing it like that, but if you were, that's what you would do. And then if you are migrating aliases from your webpack.mix file to your vit.config.js file, you should ensure that the path starts with a slash. And we can update the alias. So I'll just grab this from here and we'll put it in our new config file. Okay, and then we can come under plugins here and drop that right off. That should be good. Let's see what else we have. For your convenience, the Laravel Vite plugin automatically adds in an at symbol alias for your resources JS. Okay, that's great. How we would do before where we would run npm run watch or npm run dev, we're going to be using the Vite versions of those. It's going to be similar. So if we do npm run dev, basically that's just going to hot reload it so we won't need a watch in there. And so npm run build will be for production. Okay, so let's open up the package.json. 
And now we can go ahead and replace this stuff. Okay, and we're going to get a bunch of errors, but we'll fix all of that in a moment. So let's go ahead and grab this and get rid of it. Okay, and so now my IDE has stopped yelling at me. Great, let's see what else is there. Okay, V compatible imports. It only supports ES modules. So basically, whenever we see require, we are supposed to change it to import instead. Let's go ahead and start by bringing in this new import. And this is going to go in the app.js. Resources. Go ahead and plop that here. And then we also need to change this resolve name to this import meta glob. Resolve right here. We'll go ahead and add that here. Cool. Additionally, you should ensure that you have updated to at least version 06.3 for Inertia Laravel. Okay, if we go to our composer.json, Inertia Laravel 0.5.2. So let's go ahead and upgrade this. 0.5.2. So I'm going to go ahead and change that here. And then we'll do composer update. Okay, great. We have been updated. Let's go ahead and drop that. Fantastic. But now we also need to update the environment variables. So I'm going to grab this. And then we're going to head over to .env. And we have mix pusher here, so we can go ahead and replace this with this. And if you are using it in the app, then you're going to go ahead and use the key with the new v.pusher.app or .env. We've done that before with Mix, so that would be an instance where you would use it. You just use the new v pusher instead of that. And the next thing we can do is in our app.js, we need to import this. Also, we need to import Bootstrap. Now, the reason I say that is because up here we are requiring it. Let me go ahead and paste this first. And then we'll do import. In our app.blade.php, we need to replace our reference links and scripts from the mix to use V. So I'm going to go ahead and copy this. And I'm going to go ahead and paste it here. And now we can get rid of these styles. Okay, great. Okay, the entry point should match those used in your v.config, which we've already done. Here's if you're using React. Basically, any place that we have a component, so it's giving us an example of a button component. So we would be importing from, and then we do need to add dot view. And if you guys have been following me, you know that I don't really use the dot view. So that's something that I'll have to remember to do. But just so you know, if you run into errors, this could be potentially a problem. So just make sure to look out for that. And now we can go ahead and remove Laravel Mix. And then we can remove the webpack.mix.js. It's gotten rid of it right here. If you're using tests, this is something instead of without mix, you'll use without V. Uh, there's some changes for Vapor as well. So this is if we are using Tailwind, which we are. So we'll need to create a postcss.config.js file. This can be initiated by NPX. So we'll just copy this. Or you can also create it manually and add this. But we're going to use this. Okay, tailwind.js config already exists. And it's also created post CSS, which we can see right here. And if we open it up, the module exports are using Tailwind CSS. And now our CSS, it's also being imported into our app.js. So I don't really think we need this right here. I'm going to remove that. I think we only need the app.js since it's being imported already, but if we run into any errors with that, then we'll go ahead and change it back, but it should be good. I, I really can't remember. <laughs> okay, and if you're using git ignore, then you want to put this in that git ignore file. These are the build files that we're going to be getting when we go to production, so you don't really want those exposed. 
And that we can just go ahead and drop it right under here. Fantastic. Okay, and if we head down optional update SSR configuration, which we aren't really using that, so that's not an issue for us, but this is how you would set it up. And this is what you would add to your Vite build command. And then you can also have a bootstrap slash SSR and just some other things. Now, if you're using Laravel sale, then you would go ahead and use this new port and that's pretty much it. So let's go ahead and try to run NPM run dev and see what kind of errors we get. Because anytime we are upgrading or something, every use case is different. So the documentation may not get everything that you'll need totally. So we're going to use our best judgment and try our best to get this up and running. I'm going to go ahead, open this, and I'm going to open these instead. I've got my PHP server on this side running. So I'm going to go ahead and run dev here. Oh, wow, nothing. <laughs> we'll see when we go. <laughs> we'll see when we get to the browser. Go ahead and refresh it. Ah, see? Inspect. See what our error is? Require not defined at bootstrap. Ah, okay. As I said before, we imported our bootstrap, which is absolutely fine. But something that that documentation did not show us is that this require here and this require here also need to be changed. Okay, so instead of writing it like this, I'm going to just drop this down one line so we can do it how it's supposed to be. So we have a require here, so we're gonna go ahead and do import underscore from lodash. And then now here we do window dot underscore equals, and you wanna make sure you have a space, another underscore semicolon. So now we can get rid of this and we do not need that line, so that's good. Let's do the same thing for our Axios. So this one will be import Axios from Axios, and it'll be window.axios equals Axios. Okay, so now we can go ahead and get rid of this one. And this one will be the same. And then we'll also change the import echoes because even though we're not using it, we just want to make sure that it's updated if we do decide to use it. So our import is correct. And here we'll do import pusher from pusher JS and then window Pusher equals pusher. Okay, so now we can get rid of this line and now work on our echo. And for our key, instead of process, it'll be import dot meta dot env. And this will now be v. And the same thing for cluster, it will be import meta dot env and this will be vite as well and for now i think that's good there are some other variables here as well but i don't think we'll really need them so i'm not going to include them in this video but they will be included in the repo which i am leaving a link for that in the description okay so let's try this again we'll go ahead and refresh ah okay so it looks like we've gotten our app back go ahead to register so it looks like we have everything up and running fantastic well, I hope that that was helpful. If you're enjoying the content, please go ahead and click that like button as it really does help out the channel. Here's a video YouTube thinks you'll like, and here's a playlist to follow along. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.